Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So this is going to be my story time, um, labor and delivery video. So we are in a different space. This is downstairs, not in my room, but um, baby Audrey's down here and the lighting is way better in here right now. So this is where we're going to do it. So I'm going to try to keep this kind of fast and short and to the point. So this labor and delivery and everything about it basically. So July 1st, I worked, I worked from like, I don't know, 8.30 to 2. I got home at 2.30. I was doing some thank you cards and I went to the bathroom and I noticed that there was discharge, which I didn't think anything of it because I was already having significant amount of discharge throughout the whole week. And then, so I had discharge, and so I put on a pad, and then I peed again, and I had more discharge with like a little bit of red in it. So we were Googling it, and they were said like, yes, it could be your mucus plug. So I didn't think anything of it because I was having um, discharge anyways, so I didn't think anything of it. So I put on a pad, and then I was doing thank you notes, and Ryan came home, and all of a sudden, I basically was like peeing myself, but not peeing myself. So, and I was telling him that, and then he, then he made me laugh, and it just started like shooting, shooting out, like I thought was pee, but it wasn't, of course. So, I go to the bathroom. I'm like, okay, I don't smell anything. I don't know necessarily what it was. So I just went on and changed my pad and went to do some more thank you cards and it happened again. So we were like, okay, what is going on? So we were thinking, okay, maybe my water broke. So at that point I talked or I texted my Lamaze teacher saying like my water might have broke, what should I do? And she said, no matter what, I should go to the hospital and to get it like checked to see if I did just because of in more infect risk of infection if you don't have your baby it's just more more infection you guys know so i didn't have a backpack so ryan's like you have to pack i'm packing for you let's get stuff together let's let's, let's go to the hospital so i'm like at this point crying i'm like it's too early like no she's not gonna be okay it's way too early I was 36 weeks and four days at that point and I was just shocked and I didn't really think that I was going to have her. I just thought it was gonna be, it was just more discharge. So at this point we are in the car and I'm like seeing like I kind of feel something like in my ovary area, like kind of like a cramp, but it wasn't intense. So I was like, mm, I don't know if this is a, traction or not so I was timing them they were kind of not really a certain amount of time apart or anything like that but I was feeling something so we get to the hospital I go into the observation room they hook me up to the, like the monitor so they can monitor her heartbeat and how she's doing monitoring me and then they do a test some type of test basically to see if I did if my water did break and then at that point, she said my water did break, and then I cried again. And I'm like, I was not prepared mentally for this. This is way too early. I don't have anything set up. I mean, I have basically everything set up, but like my mind was not mentally prepared. So I started crying again. So at this point, we knew we were staying. We were having the baby, basically. So um, they checked me. I was at two centimeters already and it was only like like an hour or two out from when like my water broke so I have like some notes <laughs> so my so we did the test and then at two centimeters they called the doctor in and then when the doctor came I was at four centimeters and the doctor said do you want an epidural I said yes so we had a, I had um she said well let's just do it as soon as possible and um through all that basically they found out that my blood pressure was high so 
at that point, I think they wanted me to do the epidural just because it lowers your um, blood pressure as well. So I get the IV, and the IV was probably like one of the hardest things, if that's weird. So I got the IV, they started me on like medication for the blood pressure and magnesium. So I started that and then give or take an hour later, I'm not sure about all the time and stuff because I was so not focused on that. But then I got the epidural, which I don't know if I should do a video on it. You guys let me know if you want me to do a video on it. But I got the epidural and then of course I was numb and then the doctor said like they couldn't get a proper reading on Audrey so they had the doctor went in there and put like a little probe on her head to monitor her through that because they couldn't I just couldn't do it outside basically I guess because it wasn't they couldn't find her as well basically and it was just be, making sure like she was safe and stuff so I don't know exactly when all that started and I started the epidural but through that night Ryan, my mom and Ryan were there and they were like my mom went to his car to sleep for a few hours and then Ryan went and slept for two hours in his car so they were back and forth I was like in and out of sleep I wasn't comfortable like those beds are not comfortable and it just felt like because I was laying on my back of course and I basically I couldn't move Oh, also, after the epidural, I did get a catheter, which wasn't too bad. So, I couldn't move, you know. <laughs> I was numb. And then, I was laying on, like, my back slash butt the whole time. And I was just so uncomfortable. And the pressure, I think that was another one of the worst parts of everything, is that I was so uncomfortable about being on my back and on my, like, almost like on my tailbone, like, on my lower to... To butt like and I couldn't move to get comfortable so I and then of course the pressure came when you know you're dilating so at this point all I knew I was at four centimeters like early on basically and then I did get Pitocin because my the contractions were not coming on as fast as they would like and they just they didn't want since I my, did, my water did break, they didn't want any infection to get to her or to me, so they wanted to hurry it along. So at like 4:15, I told the nurse because I had uh, I had one nurse nurse specifically to me because I had high blood pressure, and I was very close to the nurses station, just because I was at more of a risk, I guess. Um, so I called her in at around 4:15. I said. I'm having a lot of pressure, I'm uncomfortable, can you check how many centimeters I am? So she checks and she goes, you're at 10 centimeters, it's time to go. So my mom, Ryan was at his truck, so my mom calls Ryan, Ryan's on his way and then when he gets to the room, they're rolling me out to the labor and delivery room. So I go to the labor and delivery room, they put my like legs up on stirrups and I'm like, I feel her coming out like I'm having a contraction I feel her coming out like somebody needs to be watching you know because like there was a bunch of nurses and stuff but they weren't really focused on me and I was like I feel something I she's coming out you need to do watch you know basically and I was like where's the doctor where's the doctor when is the doctor coming and then the, my nurse was like oh the doctor's here and I said no, she's not. She's not here. I can't see her. She's not here. And I said that a couple times. And I guess, I don't remember this, but Ryan and my mom said that I told them that I was going to poop out the baby. I don't remember that at all, but that's what they said. But I do remember saying, like, where's the doctor? And them saying, oh, she's here. And I'm like, no, she's not. Because I couldn't, I knew she was there, like, in the building, but she wasn't where I could see her like in the room. So when she got, when the doctor got to the room, she got like her stuff set up, I guess. And then she goes, push. So I push, I go, ugh. And it was just like a little push cause I kind of wanted to see how much I need to push, I guess. She goes, no, a real push. So I did a real push 
and she just Audrey just plopped right out. <laughs> so I basically pushed her out in two 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 pushes. And so so after that they cleaned her off, they put her on me, she fed, and then so since she was little and early, they called her a late preemie. So she wasn't quite premature, but she was definitely she was a full term. So they called her a late preemie. So they checked her blood sugar. Her blood sugar was way too low. It was like I don't know in the twenties or something like that, and it needed to be in the forty. I don't know mils or percent. I don't know, but forty was the number that they wanted to get her at. So they took her off me. They bought her, fed her some formula, and then they put her under like like the heat lamp. I don't know. It's, I know it's not called the heat lamp, but like kind of what it is, right? So they were doing that, and then then they were telling me the doctor was saying like, "Oh, you have a lot of bleeding, like more than usual." And I'm like, now I'm like stressed out about that. And they were like, I guess my placenta wasn't coming out that easy. So they were like gnawing on my stomach, and every time they were gnawing on me, and I was like, "F, F, F." You guys know what the F word is. But I was like saying it constantly. I was cussing up a storm. Because like that, them pushing on me was pretty painful. More painful than like delivering her. Like delivering her, I think because she was so small, it was like super easy. But delivering, or I guess delivering the placenta was really difficult. Because I don't think it wanted to technically come out. So I guess Ryan said that. Literally, the doctor was like, I'm sorry, Lisa, but I have to do this. And she put, like, her whole hand in me and, like, was taking it out of me, apparently. I don't remember all that, but I remember her saying that I was bleeding more than normal. And I was just focused more on baby Audrey. So, yeah. So, once they got the placenta out of me, um, they were checking her sugar levels, making sure she was okay, making sure she was warm enough. Because when they're a late preemie or preemie, they, it's hard to regulate their temperature and their sugar. So they wanted to make sure both of those things were okay. And they were doing this all in the, the room, basically, that I was in. So I could always see her. She never like went out of our sight at all. And then, so they were focusing on her and then the other nurses were focusing on me because my blood pressure shot up again and they were just trying to get me on some more medication to like bring it down. So the bleeding in my blood pressure was like my issue and then her sugar and her regulating her temperature was her issue. So we both had some issues, I guess. But, um, and then I was in the labor and delivery room for two hours because they were didn't want to move me until like my um, my blood pressure went a little bit lower, and I know at that two hour mark. Oh, I did, forgot to tell you, I had her July second at five a.m. and July second is my birthday, so me and her have the same birthday, so that's kind of cool. It's kind of unique, and it's funny that my sister in law has that with her daughter as well. So, so all that happened, you know. So she was uh, five pounds, 12 ounces, and she was 18 inches long. She was just a little baby girl. And that was basically my labor and delivery. And oh, and I tore. I forgot to tell you, I tore and they stitched me up. Um, and I think that's it. I think that's it. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions about epidural or the blood pressure or anything like that, if you wanted me to do any other videos, I will be happy to. I'm going to do one video if I'm breastfeeding or not breastfeeding. And I'll do that video right after this. And if you guys have any questions. And I wanted to say thank you so much for everybody's support and comments. And thank you for being patient with me. Getting me <laughs> back to life. <laughs> kind of getting to like a routine. As much of a routine as you can with a baby. But yeah. And we are both healthy and happy most of the time. <laughs> but thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for more videos. Bye, guys.